Welcome to this month's RC Racing. Now, the more observant of you may have noticed behind me a big neon sign that means just one thing. RC Racing is back in Vegas. Well, there's several hundred racers here, racing in about ooh, seven, ten classes of, uh, we have 12th cars, we have uh, touring cars, we have World GT, but I have an exclusive piece of news here, which I think all the world's motorsport media is going to want to know. The world champion is driving a Ferrari. Well, obviously not Sebastian Vettel, but another German world champion, it's Mark Reinhardt, who's down here. Mark, we've, we've already revealed the exclusive interview that a, a German world champion is now driving for Ferrari. Um, yeah. <laughs> tell us about how that came apart. How did you manage to make that big you know, trip to the Scuderia? Um, <laughs> yeah, isn't the main problem was that uh, tell me I don't have uh, like a Mercedes where Schumacher drives, but uh, I'm pretty familiar with uh, Ferrari because Schumacher had a really good time with Ferrari, so uh, I don't mind and I think it's a really nice car. But isn't the Schumacher car much wider and just automatically hits other people? Uh, no, I think you're talking about Hamilton, maybe. Oh, well, talking about Hamilton, over here, young Victor. Victor has taken the role of Lewis Hamilton. Are, are you going to drive like Lewis, especially considering we have a, a Ferrari? We, are we going to see a lot of incident and action within the Formula One race? Yeah, normally I need to put him on the side of the track, which maybe I had to do if I get an opportunity. We'll see. Now, we have you in Formula One, but we also have you know, the world champion, Mark Reinhardt. So we, it's, a, it's a really, really interesting class. I mean, why have you decided to embrace that? Well, I got, uh, actually, I'll, I'll uh, throw the props to Hero from mm -hmm. HPI and Charles Lightfoot, who they were uh, big into the Southern California uh, Formula One race scene. And they said, what do you, what do you think about it? <laughs> what, why are you so keen on F1? I think F1 is very realistic body with rubber tires especially and it's very nice speed it's not too fast not too slow and everybody can get into very easy so I personally love F1 racing plus I think for RC car F1 racing is I think kind of short course track for off-road side mm -hmm. yeah. like a new category then we can uh, bring new guys more. So with the cream of RC enlisted into the F1 class organizer and competitor Scotty Ernst calls on speed merchants Bruce Carboni to give him a little boost. He said they were having an F1 class and I literally texted him, I'm like, hey, you want to run F1? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, crap, I got to make him an F1 car. <laughs> that was it. You've used some parts of a, a Pro 10 and then, kind of, then you've melded on your, your experience with 12 cars, haven't you? Correct, yeah. It's basically almost exactly our World GT rear end and then the beautiful HPI front end. I really, I just think it's beautiful. A nice molded F1 front piece, and that's it. It is a beautiful piece of engineering, because of course, in a way, the, the, the F1 kits you get at the moment are very much, I suppose, not, not, not for racing. racing, exactly, not designed for racing. So you've actually changed that and moved it forward, and, and it's a, well, perhaps it's an unfair advantage for Scotty. Possibly, but he doesn't get a lot of wheel time anymore. He's out there with Reinhardt, so we'll give him every advantage he can get. Well, we're just moments away from the green flag, but it wouldn't be the two IC we didn't get the main man, Scotty Ernst, take on the F1 final lineup. We decided to put this class in kind of late stages of the event, and it really turned out to be maybe the one of the most special because you got big guns in it. You got Mark Reinhardt, Victor Wilk in it, Hayato's in it, and uh, a lot of guys that really love Formula One, the scale appearance and things like that. And uh, Bruce Carboni from Speed Merchant surprised me with a car and fielded me in the, in the field. So uh, it's really cool to have the big guns in it. If I got to pick, I don't know, who's that guy sitting ninth? Um, Scotty Ernst, he's got to be my pick for the win in Formula One. Well, I'm really looking forward to this, and here's the grid. Uh, the Sauber of Hayato Matsuzaki is on pole position, ahead of the Red Bull of Hiro in second and in third. Victor Vilk is on the McLaren with Mark Reinhardt in fourth place, and he's got the Ferrari. Well, that's the second place car. Where is the pole man? There he is with the Sauber getting away very nicely. Hayato Matsuzaki. And in second place, it's the Red Bull of Hero. I often say it, second place, there's a Red Bull, unless it's followed by the words Mark and Weber, obviously. Uh, in third at the moment, the McLaren is Victor Vilk. And, oh, great battling. Fantastic action from those two as they battle for position. Going through, there's the rest of the field. Scotty, what is that paint scheme? It looks like an old Arrows down there. 
as the battle for second continues these cars running on rubber tires and the motors well they are running them flat out these motors they are deliberately tuned down to give a more scale look and feel to what we're watching and I've got to say I like this can only imagine this there's a big shunt on the infield oh and that's the leader the leader just off to the right of picture there had gone off but i think has recovered immediately to third yes there is the light colored sauber in third position give me a job in formula one as the leader goes off the red bull's got off there oh my goodness me hero loses it whilst he was in the lead that leaves the mclaren then of victor vilk out in front but he's being chased down by a sauber and that was our pole man matsuzaki I was just about to say, imagine what these cars would look like on an open outdoor circuit. I think they'd look pretty good. Not sure how they'd co cope with the undulations, of course, that you tend to get on outside circuits. Oh, my goodness me. The, dri the driver's assistant will have to be in there. The stewards will be called as Mark Reinhardt comes through into second place. But that was attacked, the leader there, by the second place car. However, I've got to say it. It was decent driving to allow him back in the lead. Now he's back into second now. That's the Sauber of Matsuzaki back into second. With still the McLaren of Victor Vilk leading. Reinhard for a moment in the Ferrari up into second place. But has dropped back to third. And again, these two cars are pushing out away from the rest of the pack. They are clearly difficult to stop, these cars. Because I've noticed that, uh, that these drivers and there is a perfect example of that. Lots of understeer. If you don't get them t uh, slowed down and turned in right, these drivers are very good indeed. Now, here's that incident again. And that's a lovely pass, isn't it, for the lead. And that is Hayato Matsuzaki back into the lead where he was at the start of the race from pole position, of course. Just to finish again, though, that little thought. These drivers are very good RC pilots. And to see them struggling to get these cars turned in they are clearly not that easy to drive and i'm very very appreciative of this style of racing just looking at the back of the leader's car it's not a little flame that you can see there there is just something orange on the back of the car now uh, this is mark reinhardt and he is battling with uh, hero a little bit further back down the field for third position the last step on the podium. That Ferrari looks absolutely fantastic. And clearly, quite a lot of time, effort and sleepless nights has been spent by the guys making these cars look as near as replicas as possible, even down to the decals and the sponsor's liveries. And it does actually make it a little bit easier for me to commentate on Oh, and again, down the inside, Hero just having a little look but can't get it done as Mark Reinhardt is tracing a pretty decent line. He's got some lapped traffic there and he deals with it. Now, this clearly is the difficult part to get them turned in through. Oh, and again, a little mistake by Hero. Trying to get them turned in through. The rapid changes of direction, unlike some of the other RC machinery that we see, they don't just zip from left to right. There really is a transition between turning in and getting the car to the apex of the corner Reinhardt still under extreme pressure holding on to that last spot on the podium so Reinhardt with the Ferrari goes a little bit wide there and wide again Heroes through into third but just for a moment as Reinhardt cuts back gets the drive off the corner and takes the position back. He's on the podium, but my goodness me, he's turned over by Hero. Boy, Hellenic comes through into third position. Now, let's have a look at it again. That is clean. And Hero's into third. Mark makes contact, then dives back down the inside and gets the drive off the corner. Our leader then coming through to take the chequered flag is Matsuzaki. And through he goes on the Sauber to take a very entertaining win in the Formula One class. So confirmation then of the result in the Formula One category. Hayato Matsuzaki wins it. Victor Vilk in second. Mark Reinhardt claims the third spot on the podium. And only the first two do the full trip. You, you had a long lead. You had a crash. You had to come back through. Is it is it hard to overtake with these cars? Yes, uh, final race is very high bite grip. 
and then after crash, my wing is broke, and then less traction. <laughs> yeah, very difficult to drive. Yeah. Coming up highlights the large scale touring car European final plus more Vegas action. But first, let's get a quick off road fix and look at HPI's Mini Recon. Okay, this is the smallest truck in the range. Great for indoor use and it's just for fun, right? Nothing too crazy. <laughs> yeah, right. Welcome back to RC Racing. More Vegas racing in a bit, but first, let's catch up with the large-scale touring car Euros with Matt in Germany. Thanks, Nick. Well, it's not often that we get such a mix of nations represented in a Euros final. It just goes to show how wide the large-scale phenomena has spread across Europe. It is, however, business as usual seeing Marcus Feldman on pole. The man has dominated the competition for the last four years and his biggest competition, young Czech driver Alice Bayer, the TQ man, ran out of gas in his semi and doesn't make the final grid. His brother Martin there on second will do what he can. Also, two former world champions, Martin Lissau and Ian Oddie, couldn't go the distance, but still plenty of familiar names there, more than capable of, well, perhaps taking second in fairness, behind the Feldman. The final race began with a clean looking lap, very few knocks and bumps from the drivers eager to get ahead. Though before long, Marcus and Martin began to break away. Seven laps in, Marcus put his foot down, leaving Bayer, Arnaldi and car four of Dario Vaselli to battle for second place. Feldman, having held the championship for four years now, has no intention of giving it up. Dario, meanwhile, appeared to have much more speed than Arnaldi, but couldn't seem to find a way past. Similarly, Martin Bayer, not even five minutes into the race, has no interest in playing this safe. He makes his bid for the lead. But Marcus is in trouble. The man who's been unbeatable for a long time has stalled 10 laps into this race and is helplessly waiting for his mechanic. After several tugs, it's clear the engine won't restart. Back at the front and in a split second, this race has been blown wide open. Martin Bayer doesn't hang about, but yellow car three of Elaine Bernard Arnaldi is hot on his heels. Moments later, Marcus is in the pit lane, and now at least we know we will have a new European champion. As things stand, we have Bayer in first, Arnaudi close second, and Dario Vaselli in third, but gaining all the time. Right behind them, the race is just as action packed. Former world champion Hessel Roskam is gunning his red and yellow car to take fourth place from Nicola Constantin Marone. At times, just inches ahead of him, with the yellow car 10 of Cedric Prevo right behind him. Moments later, Prevo passes Roskam and takes fourth from Marone. Back at the front, orange blue car of Dario is piling the pressure on Arnaldi for second place. He's set back by a bad turn and a spin out. 
But before long it pays off and 35 laps in, Dario takes second place. But by now he has lap traffic between him and leader Martin Bayer. 10 minutes to go and a few tricky moments. Car 6 of Oliver Sampietro lands in the grass. As does Frenchman Mathieu Briere. Car 10 of Cedric Prevo continues to show he means business, holding on to fourth place for most of the race. Behind him is Hessel Roskam, fifth place up from seventh on the grid. But out in front now, by a long way, remains Martin Bayer. Second, and in a rather similar colour scheme, is Dario Vaselli, eager to catch up but struggling a bit in the corners. Bayer, however, but for a few issues with back markers, drove lap after lap calmly and consistently, despite knowing that barring disasters, he was moments away from winning his first ever European Championship. Well, a few nerves are to be expected, but Martin Bayer seals the deal and he is the new European large-scale touring car champion. At this race, we start with prototype car for next year and prototype engine. So it was every round just learning and understanding to car how it goes. And so it was a lot of work to, to get the car like, like for win. So I'm very happy then. then we did this very well and it's prototype so it's it's very good. Did you see Marcus go out? Did that give you perhaps a sense that there were some more possibilities here now? I just see then he stop stop on the track but I didn't I didn't feel or thinking nothing. I just again drive drive so I was not thinking about this and he he is out of the race so I have more chance so was we drive the whole final just with no mistakes and then it comes so. Dario, tell us about your final. It starts okay, I, I was on the fourth position, make some mistakes, be behind uh, Martin Bayer, Feldman and Arnaldi, try to push, but Martin is, he was so fast that he is little going in front of Arnaldi, so I was faster than Arnaldi, but I can't go through. But. This was my second final in my life in European Championship in Touring Car. Well, congratulations to Martin. Now let's get back to Scotty Ernst for more 2IC action. Thanks. We look at our next class, and it's going to be Expert World GT. A very, very exciting, fast class with some big drivers in it. The one guy that kind of looks to be on the top of his game is Josh Searle. He struggled in 12 scale. Last year, he won 12 scale here. This year, had some tough luck. He's really focused on his World GT. He's starting on pole. I hate to always take the pole favorite, but hey, you got you to gotta give the nod to Josh. Well, here is the grid with Mike Blackstock down there in sixth. There's a name that RC Racing viewers will have heard us talking about before. Top three. Pete Dagnolo, Hooper Honigal in second, and the American Josh Shirrell on pole position. So what can the pole man do? Well, it's a decent start. Dagnolo comes very quickly in the bright red car. He's taken out Honigal. There's carnage at the first corner. Leader's got away. That looks like AJ Evans has gone through into second place in the all-white machine with Blackstock through from sixth up into third. Yep, that's how it stands at the moment. Cyril going out in the lead. Well, what a break that is for him. And Evans and Blackstock making the best of the absolute nightmare that was handed to them. Honigal is amazingly up into third for a moment, but still sitting in fourth at the moment. He was absolutely attacked by Pig Danolo in the bright red machine, who's dropped down to, what, seventh or eighth position. But here's the battle at the moment for second, third and fourth. Evans... In second, easy to pick out with that wide car, then Blackstock. Honigal will be fuming from second on the grid. Oh, and there's a pass for second position as Evans went wide. Through goes Blackstock into second position. And now Honigal wants to get that white car behind him as well and set off after what he must feel is his rightful position. That was a bit of a sideways action as Dinolo's fighting his way back through as well. Side to side contact. So Honigal is now up into third position behind Blackstock. It looks as like Evans has dropped away from this battle now. Probably, I just wonder if he's had a problem with his machinery. As Dinolo in that bright red car from grid three is in fourth. Now 
look at this battle as they go through the infield again. Honigal and Blackstock battling for second place, and Honigal goes through. My goodness me, I didn't think that was an overtaking spot there. I'm not sure we've seen any kind of passing there other than lapping vehicles all weekend right in that spot there what a fantastic maneuver by Hooper Honigal he started in second he's in second at the moment you might think that that was well you know just holding his position but what an eventful run he's had as he'll try now to chase down Josh Shirrell who was in pole position that was a back marker going very very high off the infield fences Josh Shirrell still leading out Hooper Honigal in second place now we're watching Blackstock versus Daniolo for third position now Blackstock is very quick into that first corner as we saw at the start these machines two-wheel drive form tyres really like these all ran with Corvette style bodies in previous years as the lapping back markers there these all representations of uh, Alpha 8Cs very flat very aerodynamic I do like this class, I'd like to see this class pick up a little bit actually, have a few more entries. I think it's a very accessible way to go RC racing and this is the battle for third and proves if nothing else that there's plenty of action to be had there. Slight mistake by Dinolo and he's now dropped back, well I say that and straight away he's back onto the rear wing of Blackstock in third position. Lap traffic is always a problem in GT racing doesn't matter how big or small the cars and Blackstock was just for a moment held up looks like they've got company there in fifth position as well but at the moment all eyes our cameras and everyone here in this big crowd watching this battle for third first and second well away from this and in fact there's an incident there and did Blackstock get through unscathed there yes he did it was Dan Olo sideways again after contact so that should put Blackstock solidly into third position. Here is our leader and surely soon to become our winner. Josh Cyril is on his last lap. And what a fabulous race it has been for him as he comes to a halt, almost putting a lap on the whole of the field. Well, in fact, just the top three finished on the lead lap with Mike Blackstock in third position. Hoopmore Honigal really the only driver who had anywhere near the pace of Josh Cyril. And of course, Hoopmore involved in that first corner incident had to spend far too much of the race fighting his way back to second place. Josh Cyril, what a fantastic result for him. And he's down with Nick. I was kind of surprised, you know, I mean, Hoopo and all those guys are always so quick off the start, tried to get out of there quick and see everybody piling up. I kind of looked back, it's, you know, it almost wrecked myself in the next quarter, like, what happened to everybody? You know, where'd they go? But uh, after that, I just kind of cruise around and try not to wreck it with everybody else crashing in front of me some more, too. Well, that's all the massive, fantastic, amazing neon Vegas action we've got time for. But rest assured, we're back in Sin City in forthcoming shows.